to the Bean Ninjas podcast, where you get an all-access pass to see what happens behind the closed doors of a fast-growing global bookkeeping and financial reporting business. So, hello, Michael. Hey, Amp. Good to be back. Good to be back. We're on week four of our five-part Working in Public series. Um and uh, let's just get right into it. Uh, what was your objective for last week and how did you, what were the results? The two big focuses were speaking to as many people as possible. Uh, and that was involved in rolling out a blueprint session, which is kind of a, a one-on-one call that I do with people for about an hour, an hour and a half. And we go through some goal setting and, and look at their finances and, and work out what their future could be like, depending on adjusting a few different settings. Um, so that's been good. I've been busy this week with calls, which has gone really well. And the second objective was getting the landing page for Profit First finally set up. And I'm happy to announce we're pretty much there. We are 98% there. Um, it just need to finalize the payment form when people click through to purchase the service. But besides from that, it looks good. I'm really happy with it. So all in all, uh, a successful week based on the objectives. And tell me about your week, mate. Good job. Uh, So for me, three objectives from last week. One was to review our uh, campaign performance from the previous launch we did for the course uh, and then work out what our next steps are for our Know Your Numbers course launch, which is the next course coming up in May, um, so a month from now. So that that was done. Um, We got the team together, had a sort of debrief session, went through. It was really fascinating just to learn to get different perspectives on how did we go with Facebook and Google ads, what about our email marketing, what about um, our sales process, um, the messaging. And so we kind of got some insights from that and then put together some key planning uh, around how do we do the next launch. Uh, and really, it's going to be a much more, uh, I guess, scaled back version of it. And and we know for this upcoming launch that it's only going, we only really want to sell 12 mentorship spots for know your numbers, um, and so it's it's a lean lean approach to that launch, which is really yeah. good. What were the, yeah. what were the what were the key learnings from that review? Do you have any that might be useful to people listening to when they're doing their similar launch? Yeah, absolutely. Like one of the challenges that I spoke about in the last episode was um, we had set up we had invested a lot of energy, money, um, effort into creating like a three part video series filmed on location in the Gold Coast. Um, you know, with a videographer, had it edited by a, a video editor, all this, this kind of work. And then on the, on the, as part of the launch process, we had like a hundred people sign up, um, into the mailing, into the mailing list through our content. Uh, and then when we started to drip out the emails for them to go and look at the videos, no one, like probably like three or five people clicked through and watched the videos. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and so a big lesson around that was, you know, you really got to be clear on what people are wanting, like what specific challenges they're going through, and yeah. then then make your content compelling enough and your messaging compelling enough for them to go, yes, I want to click through right now and watch that. Uh, otherwise, they won't go and see it. And because people didn't see it, obviously then they didn't buy the course, yeah. right? Um, yeah. And now there's another tangent to that which is covered hit in the middle of that process uh and so everyone's focus shifted as well now in hindsight if we had the time and the luxury uh what we could have done was change the messaging around uh you know financial freedom and all these things that we normally talk about uh, and talk about well how do you stabilize your business how do you plan for recession how do you get your numbers right in that regard which is kind of what we've been doing with the government stimulus uh webinars right so yeah yeah, but that we, we could only know that from looking backward like we wouldn't have known that looking forward because you can't predict something like a global pandemic right not at all um, not at all yeah yeah so that was one and the other one was around just um getting clear uh, one of the objectives of that campaign was to really get insight into or a baseline around what are our cost our average cost per click for an ad um for google and for facebook what does it cost to convert a lead um, so get someone clicking through your ad to to some kind of opt in and then and then um, joining your your list uh, your wait list something like that, um, and yeah. so that was yeah that that was a, a really important thing 
because um, then we came out of it with, yes, now we understand that if we put, you know, $1,000 in, we, this is what we expect to come out and then how many results we would get from that. The one metric we didn't get was how much does it cost to, for someone to buy, right? So um, that's going to be something that we'll plan for the July launch and, and we'll look at that. But something that also came out of that campaign was we were able to build an, an audience, a Facebook audience of around 7,000 uh, small business owners um, which is an audience we didn't have before. Okay, so now we can actually go back and like use that audience to send um, content to, to advertise to, to, to send messages to. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, it sounds like there was still some big learnings and and some still some big goals kicked there. Hundred percent. Yeah. So that's um, yeah a bit of the behind the scenes on the campaign aspect. Um, right. In terms of the other objectives, we uh, uh, one of last week was really about promoting this government stimulus. A webinar for Australian businesses that I, I worked with you on, and um, you know that was really from it was it was amazing. Like we basically went from idea to execution within uh, I say even less than seven days, um, and and that was just yeah done really well. And we'll go into the results in that in a moment. But that was done, <laughs> and yep. we uh, made that happen. And then the third one was to like you to build a landing page. Uh, but my one was around building the Know Your Numbers page, and that hasn't been done yet. That's still in progress. Um, our developer guy, he actually went on leave or he had some time out, um, like some of us, like just to, to, to work through things. Uh, and then so he's come back now and, and we'll sort of, I've gone back to him and, and he'll be working on that next week. Awesome. So let's talk about some of the wins that um, we were able to get over the last week. What were they for you, Mike? Uh, the wins were me for probably from an internal learning perspective. So I've now delivered um, a fair few of the blueprint sessions and I had a call with Merrill about refining this product and making it even more targeted and trying to give even more value from it. So that was a really productive call I had with her yesterday about, um, you know, some, some questions or the, the, the structure of some of the questions would lead someone in the wrong direction at the wrong time. So looking at like, the, the question flow and where the business owner is mentally uh, after the, the question before it, you know, so trying to trying to make the conversation flow in the right direction um, and lead it all the way through. So that was really interesting and I'm really excited to, to try out this new um, new kind of version. And the other one was a pivot. So everyone's talking about this a lot at the moment because a lot of people's businesses have really been devastated with closures and stuff like that and everyone's looking for other income streams so i'm trying to pivot not only my messaging but also what we're offering to our clients so i'm also planning to roll out uh, a new cash flow management tool for our clients and testing it in beta version with some existing clients and then rolling it out to a larger group of people and that's more about people are in survival mode and people need to know what's going to happen for the next six the next 12 months and how do they get through this um so I'm really excited to develop that. I've, I'm booked in some time early next week to build that out and then start testing it. So, yeah, rolling out yet another product. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's a fantastic demonstration of this um, product launch or business launch process and, and something – there's a really good piece that I shared in, in our team Slack, which I'll, I'll add to the show notes here, uh, which was written by a guy called Rand Fishkin who um, – his business is called Spark Toro, and he wrote about. Uh, he's getting a lot of questions from from business owners and entrepreneurs and whatnot around how to what's the best way to, to do marketing right now. Like as people are going through a shift in focus when they're in survival mode, as you say, um, and just as what you've highlighted, the important thing is to he says to feel the room, which is basically the, he gave a good example of you know if you walked into a funeral, <laughs> um, and and you would then very quickly work out what would be the right thing to say, right? Like you would, and, and you wouldn't be there pitching your product necessarily. What you'd be doing is understanding where people are emotionally, and then you would go, okay, well, how can I support you in that way? Um, and another thing that he highlighted there was that it's not about not marketing. So it's not about not doing sales. It's actually because you can still have conversations with people and you don't talk about the person in the casket. Like that, that, that's not the only thing you focus on, right? You focused on pushing the questions still come around, well, how's life? How's business? Like what's going on for you? Um, and that's kind of conversations that we're having now. And then that then drives, well, what? how can we actually better serve our people? And then that pivot that you've made is a good example of that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. and. 
And for you, mate, what were the wins for the week? Uh, so we uh, a couple of, we've got three. One is we've got a plan of attack now for how we're going to do our Know Your Numbers course launch. Um, and as I said, it's going to be much more lean. Uh, we are looking to fill 20 mentorship spots on that one. Uh, so the main focus here will be just to sell the course through direct outreach. Um, so people that already know us, already we already have some kind of relationship with. So we, you know, we're not going out cold. Um, and then the other one is selling through partners because that's worked for us in the past. And and usually when a partner does ref- says, "Hey, you know, B Ninjas is doing this course and this is going to help you out," um, people buy based on the strength of credibility and relationship. Uh, and that's much more powerful, you know, for for a product sale than than. And we've talked about just networking before in a previous episode but just building those relationships right yeah absolutely uh, and then the uh second win is yeah i mentioned the stimulus webinar um uh, we had a like i love seeing showing the statistics the actual um data around this uh we're using a tool called uh webinar ninja which i'll link to in the show notes and it basically gave us this report that I'm looking at a visual report and it showed that we had an average watch time of 45 minutes for a 59 minute webinar. So that's basically close to what 90% of people were still on the webinar before it, like 10 minutes before it finished. Um, which is pretty amazing considering we had 86 people on the webinar, right? Um, and we had 151 registrations. Uh, and you, 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 Nailed it, you and Meryl, uh, with the content. So we got a lot of positive feedback uh, at the end of during that that webinar as well, which is really really cool. Um, and then the third win for me was just I've been very active in community building. Um, so I participated in three virtual networking events this week with different communities, um, and just you know I can't get out to them and, and go to networking events like we did <laughs> before COVID but um, we're doing this online and it's actually really cool because I've been able to jump on for example a couple of days ago it was a virtual networking event with someone who the host was based in uh, in Portland in in, uh, in the US and so you can do this type of things now uh, and as a result of some of these these meetups I've been al- I've also been able to book three podcast interviews over the next few weeks. Yeah, everyone's stuck inside, so they want to chat. That's right. You know it. <laughs> now, let's talk about getting stuck inside and what have been the challenges for you, Mike? Uh, yeah, so uh, my one of my big challenges this week, to be honest, has been isolation. Um, so I'm into day 11 of 14 inside. So I'm on the home stretch of um my isolation, but I'm looking forward to seeing humans again. And and I was getting a little bit of anxiety this week, I'm not gonna lie. Um and so just working my way through that, I, I think the whole world is is doing it tough right now and coming to groups with our new reality. So there was you know, I I I understand it's a co- it's a collective worry amongst us all, but um it also built up in me and I guess I was working too much and working odd hours. You know when you've got your laptop there the whole time, you never know when you should and shouldn't turn off so i've had to be a little bit stricter and and kind of develop some more official routines to to get me back on track but i'm feeling a lot better later this week and and a little bit more settled so that was probably my big challenge this week to be honest it was it was yeah a personal one i guess yeah and you're definitely not alone on that one and i'm pretty sure people listening to this going yep (laughs) i totally know the feeling uh especially for us who like to get out and you know go and do the surfing or for me riding my bike and or going you know and then meeting people um so i was even just reflecting on you know us hanging out at fish burners and or you know and um startup hub and those sort of things and just right now you can't do that so totally can like i can completely empathize with your situation yeah. <laughs> um yeah. yeah so for me uh some of the challenges kind of related to that is more around just um I'm gonna, well, the flip side of that is how do you actually get people active inside of a new community, right? So we've launched a private Slack community for our clients. Uh, and, you know, it started off really well. People started to do introductions and these sort of things. And then it kind of went silent for a few days. And, um, it's so now it's, it's a case of putting my community manager hat back on, which I haven't done in a while, but, um, really going back to uh, what are the basics here and, and, how can we give people a great experience and, and really demonstrate to them that the community, the Slack group is a place 
um, where they can connect with others, where it's, there's value in them participating um, and what they'll get out of it. Uh, and so the question that sort of I'm playing around with and open to your thoughts and ideas um, and anyone listening to this uh, is, you know, what what actually makes people want to come back to a community, right? So what makes you participate in any online groups that you're part of or any Slack groups that you're in? Because I know your, your, for your co-working space, there's a Slack group as well, I think. Um, but uh, that that's something that we're in this new reality. We're going to have to learn and, and navigate. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a challenge. i tell you what I'd love in Slack is the ability to monitor one or two key threads from a different Slack channel in your current one. You know, you have to switch workspaces to kind of go into mm. to see what's going on. So it's like I'm sometimes I'm pretty slack with getting into like my co-working space one because you get I get stuck in work mode. We've got one for Bean Ninjas. And so I think it's just a case of people being engaged in their own business and then having to switch into the workspace mm-hmm. to see the chat for me it's just that that switching creates a barrier which would mean sometimes it can drop down my list if, I, if i'm not on top of it you know yeah that's a really good point and that's we've seen that with facebook groups as well and people not joining our facebook group or they join but they don't do anything so i think yeah you're definitely onto something there around how you I'm going to have to explore that and see if there's a way that we can do that better. Um, and then the sort of the, the second challenge I've had, same similar to you, is just navigating sort of the impact of this whole coronavirus um, on my own well-being mentally, more so than anything else. But physically, I've not been exercising as much, so <laughs> uh, that's causing issues with the stomach. But um, you know, and I can't blame it on beer belly because I haven't been drinking beer. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, just more so there were a couple of pieces that, that, uh, and this kind of sort of naturally rolls into the next question, which is what have we learned this week? Um, and and just the conversation around, you know, isolation around working from home or, you know, and it's really interesting because like you and I and and the Bean Ninjas team, we've been working from home for a long time. Like that's part of of our DNA. Um, but it's different. Right, like right now, it's still a different experience. So, I'd love to just get your insights around so what you've learned um, in this in this period from from working from home. From yeah, just this. You know, you talked about isolation being a challenge. So, what is, what are some of the learnings around? Um, what what are your learnings from from the last week or so? Uh so we did a program. I did a program a while back called Peak Persona, which is which is a really really cool thirty day challenge. And so, I've had to reactivate some of those learnings to try and um, get me back on track. So the key things that I've found have helped me this this week when I've been struggling is exercising in the morning straight away. So I get up and exercise. I get up and try and drink uh, half a litre of water and then move. So stretch or get get a sweat up, whatever way you need to, um, and then have brekkie and, and get to work. And that's really helped kickstart my mindset in a positive way. Um, I've got, I know it sounds funny, but I've got, uh, work clothes, so I don't just wake up in the same clothes and then um, sit sit in the same clothes after once I finish work. So I um I kind of have my uniform, if you will, to do it. And I've also set a lot more structured time frames around when I start and when I finish, making sure I don't eat into the evening. I make sure so I've got some time to switch off and prepare before I go to bed. Um, and then also in in the more sensitive times, it's just been about. Um, speaking to people when I'm feeling a bit anxious and, and worried about that stuff. So that's been a big help. And I've also started meditating again, which is probably the final thing that's really helped. I, I learned a whole, quite a long time ago, but fell out of the habit. So that's been really useful to, to pick back up. So is that like a seated 10-minute or half an hour meditation or are you is it silence or do you like to do it with some kind of guided it's, meditation. It's, it's 20 minutes silent, sitting comfortably wherever you are, and you just repeat a mantra inside your head for that for that period and kind of just uh, dissolve into it. That's the one we did. Uh, you, you led us through at the Beanies uh, Retreat. I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember that. Yeah. That's good. And what about yourself, mate? Yeah, um, definitely around uh, just on, on this theme, I think it's, learning to be aware of the emotional impact and, and the mental fatigue that comes from 
watching too much news perhaps or uh, reading too much on social media, you know, um, yeah. and just getting crazy on looking at graphs every day of how many people, how many cases of coronavirus are happening in our country and in other places. And um, there was a point where I just got to a point where I just had to just switch it all off um, and, uh, and also not, overwork because it, one of the, the, the challenges for us remote workers is we can like you say it, it's hard to switch off sometimes because you're like oh, i'll just do you know i'll just jump on the phone or my laptop and do a couple of emails and all of a sudden an hour has gone past um and so you're gonna have to like you know just be aware of that and is that a case of you trying to avoid something or not feeling into something um and that's something that I've definitely had to work through. Um, there were a couple of really, you shared a really good piece from HBR, uh, an article uh, in, in our team Slack channel around, you know, we've got a COVID-19 channel, um, which talks about grief and how we're going through a collective grief. Uh, and, and we sort of individually going through different stages of that. Um, and I really resonated with that and, and really felt, oh, yeah, we are, well, I'm mourning the loss of the way life was, like for me. And but I didn't see it in that light. I didn't sort of, sort of parallel that to, hey, that's actually, I'm going through cycles of grief, right? Um, but that was an awareness and it was like, oh, okay, that, that's what it is. And, and we haven't had the moment collectively, not individually some people have, but I, don't, I think we're not that great at going, hey, let's take a pause and actually acknowledge that that's what's happening. Like we're letting go of a way that we were before. You know, and we there's a lot of messaging now around the new what are they calling it the the, the new normal, mm. um, and it's like yeah, but you can't go to the new normal if you don't acknowledge that there's been a closure of the past normal, right? Like there's it's like when someone passes away, like we don't we don't just we, we honor them, we have the funeral, we go through a process, we grieve, and then we move on, right? And I think that's something that we don't culturally take take a pause and go that's actually what's happening right now um and so it's important to just acknowledge the feelings that we have and it's okay to have those feelings right yeah definitely i really really connected with that and you shared an awesome article about about that as well because i fell into that trap massively and i hid I, like i said i was working weird hours and trying to deal with probably not dealing with the greater situation but also dealing with my own loneliness and isolation in my current situation so i was just on the computer a lot more and trying to be busy and productive. But in the end, that came back to bite me on the ass because I was trying to be busy, but it just made me more anxious. And then I was less productive because I was kind of frazzled and mentally not there and, and not effective and not thinking clearly. So it really showed me that you can't like, uh, you know, work your way out of this. You need to sit back, stop, think about it, process it, and then take steps forward. So I kind of got wound up in that this week. And that's been a huge learning in me this week is to, it's okay to, to, you have to accept it first and, and take a deep breath and then play it out from here. Because it's that article you shared was really good because it's like, this isn't a short term thing. This isn't a two week sprint. This is, this is going to a six month process for us here. So trying to, trying to sprint your way through it's going to be impossible. So you need to kind of settle into it first. Yeah, hundred percent, and in that kind of in a different way related to the stimulus webinar that you ran, and Meryl's going to be doing a recession webinar soon, and, and recession planning, and and from an accounting perspective and a business perspective, looking at hey, like we this is not going to be a month and it's over. Like you know, the economy is going into this place where it could be another twelve months, it could be another two years before we really turn a corner, um, and. and and that's the reality we're moving into. And, and people, you know, we're so focused on the, the two week quarantine period. Um, <laughs> you're not looking beyond that. And I think that that's something that's really something to just take note of at this point in time. Um, Definitely. Uh, with the, yeah, just uh, another learning I had was just around, like I mentioned, I've been doing a lot of virtual networking and I'd love to get some of your insights around this as well and maybe share some some tips around how do you network online and uh, what have you learned from, I remember, you know, before we started, when we started this process, both of us were out there doing uh, physical in-person networking. We are going to events in our local cities and whatnot. Uh, and so what have you learned from that experience that you've been able to take and bring on to uh, networking online and, and, and building communities virtually. Uh, I've, from like so, a lot of a lot of my stuff, I haven't been super active on LinkedIn, but 
a, a goal for next week, which we'll talk about, is to be a little bit more active on in in that space. But I have been on a lot of calls, people who wanted to chat after the webinar or people who have signed on for our course. And so that's been really handy. So luckily, I've still been ha having a fair few um, face-to-face video calls with people. Um, and in, in this environment, especially, it's about being uh, empathetic and being genuine. Every call has started with a five-minute conversation on what we're living through at the moment and checking in on – like it's it's weird, the, the conversations that have been happening with complete strangers – because everyone's a lot more tapped into this situation. There's a lot of, you know, shared worry and anxiety about it. So it's the first five minutes is just talking about that. But that also opens it up for a lot more, a, a quite an honest conversation. So that's that's been one big thing is, is been our, having to recognize our situation first and then move into business challenges and the strategies because the health challenge with this is the biggest one. And then you have to acknowledge that, and then move on to move on to seeing how it's going to affect people's lives and businesses. Yeah, there was something um, to add to that. Someone said to me, I think, in one of my sessions, more networking sessions, which was around, you know, when you think about a war or you think about um, some situations. Oh, one question that someone, one of my one, one of my contacts raised was, you know, there's a lot of focus on what's happening with coronavirus and, and um, a lot of tension there. Uh, what about all the people who are dying from hunger and, and other things that, you know, the numbers are much more, like, significantly larger, right, um, than, than what's happening with coronavirus. Um, and the, the, the sort of response to that, that that I have is this is the one thing that's happening right now that actually puts us all like we're all affected, we can't escape it, right? Um, when when you hear about things that happen in other places, for a lot of us, we're detached from it because it doesn't have an immediate impact on our own lifestyles, right? But in this scenario, this is the one thing that actually affects everyone, you know? Uh, and so we can all relate. So when we're jumping on a cause like you're doing and, and talking to ind individuals, like we can all say, well, how is this affecting you? And everyone gets it, right? Um and, and so that's really interesting because these uh, networking calls that I've been getting on to, uh, we have up to, you know, one call was usually around eight or ten people and then I was on one which had like a hundred and something people on the same time, which is crazy. Wow. Um, yeah, but and, and everyone had their like three minutes to introduce themselves and, and whatever. And for the most part, it was pitch free. Like it wasn't about get on there and try and plug something. Like it was get on there and just share what's going on for you. You know, and it's actually forced us to connect at a real level, you know, as a, at a human level, mm. um, which is really powerful because um, one of my mates, uh, he he has a um, uh, a weekly podcast that he does and he talks about, well, he, on his recent episode, he talked about um, how this pandemic is actually forcing us to use the technology in a way that it was designed to be used, which is to really connect with each other as opposed to be distractions because for the longest time, you know, social media became a distraction, right? YouTube became a distraction. These things we would go to as an escape. Uh, but now we're actually using them to connect with our families because we can't go and drive the car over there and hang out with them that easily. Right. Um, and so it's, it's, we're now using the technology and the tools in a way that, that a lot of the, a lot of the intention was for us to connect better. And, and that's actually happening. So that's really a fascinating insight. Yeah, definitely. There's a few silver linings coming out of this. So it's it's all important that we try and search for them as well. <laughs> 100%. So I was just going to share one sort of learning from networking is your, yeah, coming in, like we talked one, the one that I can recap from what we've already said is um, just go in being human and just to understand the other person. Uh, and then second thing for me is to go in and to understand um, to ask questions and, and ask questions that help you better understand the other person's situation, right? And not always have like, what's the intention that I'm going to sell something to them? Because I mean, we are in a business, but it's almost like to understand maybe the best thing that I can do to help that person is actually to connect them with somebody else in my network, right? Um, or to, if they're looking for healing or they need to get connected with some medical professional or you know, yoga or whatever it is, it's not always about work and it's not always about business, um, but it's a really good time to support uh, and to nurture and to connect. And so that's that's always, I'm always looking for not necessarily where's the lead to 
for the sale. I'm looking for who's the partner I can partner with where we can work together to collaborate and then generate that sale. Awesome. That's a great insight. All right. So let's move on. We're going to wrap uh, or before we wrap up, let's talk about what are our goals for next week. What's on your plate, Michael? Yeah, it's pretty simple. Um, I want to build out that cash flow um, forecasting or consultation that I'm going to run through with some clients in the beta stage next week. Um, version two of our blueprint session as well, which is another um, session I've been having with people. And then also start rolling out a new video series, helping people with um, some cash flow management stuff. So record that and start delivering that. Those are my three big ones for next week. And yourself? Uh, looking forward to that video series. Is that going to be outdoor in nature or are you going to do it in your little studio? in the apartment? <laughs> Well, yeah, probably inside, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> if you get up early enough there's going to be no one there so you can go up there <laughs> yeah, we're, st- we're still allowed to exercise so if i did it yes. whilst walking um that that could be possible so we'll see I'll, i'm yet to be decided yeah i think that would be a good idea because people are craving to be in the out- outdoor so if you did that that would be actually helping people relax a bit <laughs> true, um, very true. with the oh, for me objectives so uh, we got, I'm going to launch the weekly Bean Ninjas um, community newsletter for members that are in our Slack channel, just a, as a way to remind them that it exists and that we are having great conversations in there and there are really cool people in that in that group. Uh, the second one is to finalize that, well, at least get a first cut of the Know Your Numbers landing page, get that up, um, and then like you know get the sales, uh, the buy button on there, and then we can start working on promoting it. And then the, uh, the third objective is to... Uh, schedule, prepare, and promote the next series of Be Ninja community events and webinars, just like um, we've got a um, US stimulus webinar uh, to, to, to continue on from the momentum of the last one that we did with you. Um, we're going to do that with Wayne. So that's it. Sounds great. All right. Well, we'll see how we go next week then. Awesome. All righty. We'll see you. And, and that's going to be the last episode. So uh, we hope that you've been enjoying the series so far. Yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. Appreciate it. Want to better understand your business, make better financial decisions, and also drive more profit? If yes, then understanding your numbers is key to achieving these goals. If you're like most business owners, you've never studied accounting, and you've never been taught how to really understand the critical numbers in your business, or how to use them to make effective decisions, grow revenue, improve profitability and increase cash. That's why we created the Be Ninjas Know Your Numbers course. And here's what business coach Justine Cox shared about her experience with the training. Probably the biggest impact for me, I found the course amazing. Uh, one, it was a bit of a refresher. I've been using zero for a while, but it really helped me to know the pieces of zero that I should focus on and, and how that can help me in my business first thing I was able to do is hand over a lot of the data entry and the processing tasks to the VA. So that saved me probably two to three hours a week. So that's the first um, win for us. But really what I wanted to focus on was the financial reporting. Um, I wasn't doing a lot of that and now I am. And the one thing that we've implemented that has made a huge difference for me understanding where the numbers are at in my business is the profit first principles and that cash flow management and so setting up uh, an extra business account i was kind of halfway there but it has been amazing it's uh one i can stop worrying about money because now i know exactly what i've got to spend where Uh, and and two i am proud of the fact that i've actually started to put away some profit so that's been amazing So if you're someone who might be getting overwhelmed with the idea of going into your zero file and not really knowing knowing what's going on money-wise with your business, or you just want a simple way to understand zero and finances for your own peace of mind, our Know Your Numbers course can help. You'll have a rare chance to work closely with an accountant and also have the support of other like-minded business owners who are going through the program. Head to beninjas.com forward slash know your numbers to learn more about our course and register to receive updates about our next enrollment period. That's beanninjas.com forward slash know your numbers or one word.